Thank you, Lord.
Bible said, Thy name is as ointment poured forth, and therefore do the virgins love thee. And do you realize when you get into the anointing of God, you're getting into more than just a thing or just a feeling or just a touch or just a moment when you felt something. But brother and sister, there's an anointing on His name. There's an anointing on His Word. There's an anointing on His person. My God, and when you get into all of those realms of the Spirit of God and start walking in the full revelation of who He is, you'll realize He's moved in this house and changed everything that there is about you. Hallelujah. Changed it all. Made it all new. Brought with Him a brand new feeling, a brand new sound. My God. Worship Him tonight because He's inhabited. He's inhabited your temple. Glory to God. My Lord, because the Lord is in His temple, let everybody bow and let all flesh keep silent before Him. Hallelujah. Oh, how we love you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. My God, you're wonderful. And I bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. tonight in the presence of the Lord. Amen. There's one thing you can say about the Lord and that is that He can't be nothing but good because that's His nature and He can't go against His nature. And the Bible says every good and every perfect gift cometh down from above from the Father of lights in whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning and there is no chance of him being anything tomorrow that he ain't today. 
and that he ain't tonight. He's Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he said, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Hallelujah. So that tells you right there that there was somebody hanging around that thought they deserved something other than what they got. But the Lord said he couldn't change. Amen. And Moses said, if you're going to take these, you'll have to block my name out of your book. He interceded. He said, hey, if you're going to get rid of them, I, you got to get rid of me. And the Lord couldn't get rid of it because he was part of the eternal plan. And he had to withhold his hand from the people. He told Jeremiah, I'll spare Israel from going to Babylon if one man had just called on me. And he told Abraham, my God, that he would have spared uh, Sodom if he could have just found how many? Five righteous people that was in that land. And the Bible said, the Lord said to the, the angel, we cannot hide this thing that we're about to do from Abraham. How many want to walk in a place in the Spirit tonight? where the Lord will let you in on everything he's doing. The Lord said we can't hide this thing from Abraham, but we're going to have to stop by the tent and tell him what we're doing. And while they were stopped by the tent, the Lord went ahead and told Abraham, Sarah's going to conceive and bring forth the son. And that's the day that Sarah laughed. And it was a prophetic laugh because Isaac means laughter. And she laughed and when she did, she came alive on the inside. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you the Lord's going to laugh a laugh of faith in this hour in the people of God. And they're going to come alive with a seed on the inside that will give them the power to produce this great move of God. We've had enough Ishmael's. Can you say amen? amen? And I'll tell you right now, it's time for an Isaac to be born in the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. We want you to, at this time, prepare an offering to give to the Lord. We just bless you and thank you for all the support of the work of God. And uh, just come and bring it and be blessed tonight. In Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in him horses. But we'll trust in the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. The Bible says, sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in joy. Break up the fallow ground. Come on now. There's time to seek the Lord until He what? Come and rain righteousness down upon us. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Ask ye of the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain, and so shall He make the heavens black with clouds. Uh, how many feel like it's getting cloudy? Amen. I don't mean in a bad, dreary way. I mean you know you smell. You know when that rain's coming, you smell it in the air. How many smell that rain? Chris has been preaching on hearing that rain. Uh, glory to God. And we went through three chapters in Zechariah Sunday. Amen. And then Sunday night, we got to preaching to you about the measuring line. And God put the measuring line in the hand of Zerubbabel and said, small days are over. Can you say amen? And I'm going back into that on for the Lord willing on Sunday and start some more things up with that, but I have to inject a prophetic message to you tonight that the Lord gave me out of Psalms 20, the whole chapter, the just nine verses, or ten verses there. Psalms 20. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read it to you out of the uh, King James, and then I'm going to quote it to you out of the message translation. But Psalms, the 20th chapter says, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. And the name of the God of Jacob, defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Selah, grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. Praise God. That's the prayer. Now here's the thanksgiving. We will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banner. Hallelujah. And you need to fly your banners tonight high. Because victory is here. Everybody that comes by your house needs to know that there's victory in the camp. And he said, and the Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his what? Right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the King hear us when we call. Listen to verses 2 through 10 out of the message translation. Send reinforcements from thy holy hill. Dispatch from Zion fresh supplies. I want you to know God's dispatching fresh supplies tonight. And he said, exclaim over your offerings. Celebrate your sacrifice. How many wants the Lord to celebrate in this house tonight? Because we're not offering blood sacrifices. We're offering the sacrifice of praise unto his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give you this is what the Lord's going to do for us. Give you what your heart desires. Accomplish your plans. And notice it says here, when you win, not if you win, but when you win, 
We plan to raise the roof and lead the parade with our banners on a scripture. Glory. May all your wishes, that's just another word for prayers, come true. Hallelujah. And then it said that clinches it, or that locks it in place. Help is coming. An answer is on the way. Everything is going to work out. Listen to him now talking about your enemies now. See those people polishing their chariots and the others grooming their horses. But we're making garlands for God our God. The chariots will rust and the horses pull up lame and we'll be on our feet standing tall. Make the king a winner, O oh God. And the day we call, give us your answer. And I want to talk about that tonight, tell you about reinforcement. And I'll tell you why in a minute, but I want to bring this into view. The night my granddad got the Holy Ghost, he had been to every preacher's prayer line and everything and still had to receive. And he went to a businessman, full gospel businessman meeting in the second floor of Marshall's cafeteria. And in that meeting was a man who got up and testified. And he had uh, befriended a widow woman in their church that had a bunch of kids and no money and her house was falling down and he was a handyman and he went over there for nothing and repaired that woman's house and some of the neighbors turned him in for doing work on her house and they called him into court and he didn't have no way to get no help, no lawyer, no nothing. So he went in the courtroom and sat down by himself alone. But the church was praying for God to move. And two men came in he had never seen before in black suits. One sat on one side of him, one sat on the other. They both were wearing smiles from ear to ear. One of them reached over and slapped him on the back. And then both of them got up and walked out from the bench and, and, and the table where he was sitting. And he turned around to see where they went to sit in the, in the courtroom, and they had gone. They wasn't there no more. The judge walked in, didn't even sit down, picked up the gavel and said, I'm dismissing this case out of court, and slammed it down. That's called reinforcements. Daughter Rambo was traveling on the road, and she had diabetes so bad that she just almost went totally blind. She already was legally blind and her feet got infected and they were having to take a, a motels on the road at night for a few hours at the time and she was having to have her legs and feet treated and medicated because of the sores that was all over them and it looked like in spite of everything she would do, she would lose her feet. But she knew if she went off the road she wouldn't have a ministry, so she just kept at it. And one night while they were home, she woke up during the middle of the night and looked out and there bright light shining. And she said, well, Buck must have left all them lights on outside. I let me go over there and see which ones are on. She went over and pulled the curtains back and the whole yard was lit up with the glory of God. And the angel of the Lord was standing in the field and she said, I got shouting happy. I said, oh, Lord, I'm going home. He's going to take me. And she said, "The Lord." all of a sudden, the Lord spoke to her and said, Dottie, that angel ain't here to take you. He yeah. said, he's here to heal you. So that's my healing angel. And she said, once she said that, that those windows opened up and a breeze blew in the window and hit her in the face and the whole room got bright and her eyes were instantly healed and every sore on her leg and feet was disintegrated, just left. 
and she instantly was healed of sugar diabetes and never had another bout with it again. On another occasion, she was standing on the, sitting on the platform of the church. They had been going, going, going. She had had no rest. She was about to have a breakdown for needing rest. And she was sitting on the platform and the preacher was getting ready to announce them. And she was interceding in her soul, crying out to God, telling the Lord, said, these people want us to sing for them. Said, they don't even care whether we're sick or well. All they want to do is just hear another song. She said, nobody in this room knows that I'm sitting up here about to die and can't go another step. And they're all just carrying on like that. And she said, all of a sudden, this girl walked up on the platform, walked right over to her and climbed up in her lap and sat down, looked at her in the face and said, Sister Dottie, the Lord said to tell you that he was very aware of where you were and that he was here to heal you tonight and to restore strength to you. She said, I was just squalling and all my, you know, makeup running. She said, I, I thought, well, this girl's got to get somewhere. We got to go sing. And she said she climbed down out of her lap and walked like she sat down in the seat beside her. And yet she turned around and there wasn't nobody there. Wow. And she said to her daughter, Reba said, did you see that gorgeous girl? And Reba said, Mother, you're cracking up. She said, there's been no girl. She said, Reba, the one that was in my lap. And she described what she looked like. And Reba said, Mother, you seriously are got to stop this so we can go and sing. And then on one more occasion, when they bought their home in Nashville, Tennessee, upon coming into the house for the first time, she went upstairs walked to go in a room, and when she went in the room, the glory of God just almost threw her backwards, and she said, Buck, I don't care what you do with the rest of this house, but I want that room to write my songs, because the Lord had told her that if He had allowed her to, she would not write by thoughts only, but revelations of the Spirit within, and that the Lord would send angels with music to put in her spirit to write those songs. Six weeks later, the moving company came with a van to move her stuff in while they were out on tour on the road. And one of the men was getting ready to close the house up. And he heard what sounded like children laughing and different things in the upper room. And he said, well, who is in the Rambo's house? He ran up there, plunged in that door, and he told Dottie it just threw him backwards like it did her. And when he looked, there was angels all in that room and they were carrying musical charts and songs and lyrics. And they were looking at one another saying, she'll be here in just a few days. She'll be here in just a few days. Amen. Now I'm talking about reinforcements. I'm telling you, you've got to come to terms with well, what really happens when you set your face to seek the Lord. You create a whole world of activity in the spirit realm. Now, yesterday was a very busy day, very busy day. And so I just had no time to seek the Lord until it got the night time. And finally about 10 o'clock I got away from everything and got in my place, my chair, in my office where I, how I many has got you a place? <laughs> I throwed that chair back and I just prayed myself right in the glory. And about an hour or so later, I said, well, I'll go to bed. And we went to bed and I fell off to sleep. And I preached all night long and I woke myself up between two and three preaching. And I just, when I woke myself up, I just laid there and enjoyed the presence of the Lord for a little bit. And I got sleepy again. I said, well, I'll close my eyes now and go back off to sleep. Only when I shut my eyes, I didn't go to sleep. Instead, I saw the silhouette of a man standing on a wall with his hands just like this, seeking God, praying, worshiping the Lord. And then after looking at that for a few seconds, the Lord drew my attention downward to where that wall, the top of that wall was. And while that man prayed, I watched hordes of army men wow. 
warriors start climbing over that wall and taking off on behalf of that man that was praying. And the Lord woke me up fully and said to me, if my people will continue to stand on that wall, I am sending reinforcements. Hallelujah. Ooh, he said, <laughs> I mean, he wasn't marching or climbing. He was standing, but he was unshakable. He was unmovable. He was praying fervently. He was holding his spot. They were leaping. They were going forth. Hallelujah. One of the definitions of reinforcement means an increase of strength that usually comes in plural form. It can be used person-wise. It can be used noun-wise. Noun-wise, it's used to say we need to reinforce this corner with another piece of metal. We need to enforce the leg of this table with something that will add strength so it won't break off. Hallelujah. But people-wise, it's the same as a general radioing in and saying, uh, we need some reinforcements. Our men are wearing out. Come on, somebody. A lot of times they're wearing out because the supplies are low. That's the reason I like that scripture I just gave you, that the Lord said He's getting ready to send fresh supplies. Fresh supplies. Can you say praise the Lord? Every time you set yourself to seek God, and that is with your whole heart, God begins to loose a plan for deliverance. Heaven gets strategic. Plans start to come to light. Oh, glory to God. Suddenly you begin to see that God's going to work in your behalf. Oh my God. Hallelujah. say these things are not by chance but by choice. They're decided upon in your heart before the matter ever begins. Yea, I trigger that hunger and desire. It is God breathed and God given. And I have brought thee to the utter edge of desire where thy very heartbeat is a thrive to see me move and to act in, in your behalf and in the behalf of those that are around you. So think not that you have just hacked up on this place, uh, but yea, ye have followed the leading of the Spirit to this place, uh, and you shall be brought forth to a total victory if you stay the mark uh, and set thy course in faith and not waver nor bend to the left or the right. You shall see the fulfillment of all your desire, and it shall be big, and it shall be glorious, saith the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you decide to pray like I'm talking about, heaven and earth are aware that things are not being left just to fall where they will. Somebody is setting a course. Somebody is establishing direction. That's what prayer does. It sets a course. you got a ship out here going ever which way. Now you know it's so because if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God 
who giveth liberty to all men and upbraideth not. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavereth. For he that wavereth is like, come on now, is like the wave. Hmm? That is what? Driven on a stormy sea. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Oh my God. Prayer is setting a course and establishing a direction. Setting a course and establishing a direction. Now what did the Lord tell Jonah when he's in the belly of the whale? But Jonah said he was in hell. Are you listening? He is a dead man. But I don't know if he died. What Jesus said he did, he said if Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and not so shall the Son of Man be. Come on now. In the heart of the earth. Look, even though he was dead to earth, was he dead in sense and in, 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 in his mind? No. He is praying. What did he do? He said he directed his prayer towards the temple. Well, that's what Jonah said. I directed my prayer towards the temple. Oh, yes. And he that forsakes mercies does what? He embraces lying vanities. He gets confused. He gets, oh my God. And that's the reason why you've got prayers in the church all right when they get upset or nervous or scared or trouble comes. Then they start screaming in such a pandemonium. But how many of you understand real prayer sets a course? It gets it steady. Oh, how I shine. Hallelujah. It gets as steady as the sun coming up in the morning. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. That makes me want to read a scripture to you. Glory to God. Oh, I feel the anointing. Let me read you this scripture. For he is the name of the Lord. This is out of Ecclesiastes, the first chapter. It says that one generation passes away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever, and the sun ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and then it hasteneth right back to the place. That's real prayer at work, folks. That my God steady as the coming of the sun and the going down of the sun. Now listen, folks. It's got to get that way to you. And then he said, the wind goes towards the south, turneth into the north, whirleth the back continually, and the wind returneth again to its what? Circuits. There's a path. There's an order. There's a divine way of this thing working. Prayer sets the course and establishes direction. If it doesn't, then you won't know how to pray. But when you know what you want to happen, that's when you come boldly and declare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know, it doesn't have to get crazy. It don't have to get out of control. You can turn the battle back to the gate and subdue every force under the name and power of God. And so with that, I want to talk about at Isaiah 36 and 7. And, and I think some of us in 38, but the same story is recorded in 2 Kings 19. And the Bible says that the enemy of Israel in this, this particular happening was Sennacherib. And Sennacherib took over all of Judah and closed in on its walled cities. And Sennacherib had a general named Rabshakeh. Oh my God, he was mean. He was trouble. Oh, glory. And Rabshakeh came to meet with Hezekiah. And he sent out three spokesmen to meet with him. And oh, glory. And, 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 and he could speak both the Arabic language and the Hebrew language. And the custom was that he would talk to the leaders in the Arab because none of the people knew what was being said and they wouldn't get afraid. But old Rabshakeh, he was mean 
and he came there to intimidate. Everybody coming to you ain't coming because they love you. Some folks is coming to try to talk you out of what you are setting yourself to do. We got some right here in this assembly that comes here that thinks we're going a little overboard with this prayer thing. Well, was you overboard a while ago when you was all shouting and hollering? You want it? Do you want it? Then you're going to do what it takes to get it, ain't you? Or you just going to sit around and say whatever, whatever, however, or somebody's going to channel this thing. Oh, you better get up and dial that, turn that frequency knob a little bit and tune in on what the Holy Ghost is doing. And you say, praise the Lord. If it ain't spirit, it ain't kingdom. I'll say that one more time. If it ain't spirit, it ain't kingdom. Kingdom ain't head knowledge. Kingdom is Holy Ghost. Can you say, praise the Lord. Ooh, hallelujah. And so the Bible said that, 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 that he was there to torment. He was there to distract. He was there to discourage. Come on now. Oh yes. And I'll tell you what's the worst kind of, uh, of that. Is the silent kind. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And so Rabshakeh was speaking to these three spokesmen for Hezekiah. And they said please speak in Arabic tongue. And he jumped up and shouted in Hebrew to all of the people of Judah and done his best to lead a revolt against Hezekiah. Said, come with us. Team up with us. Now hold your head there for a minute and use the other half of your brain to travel back into Nehemiah's wall. The same thing happened when Nehemiah was on the wall. Oh yes. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I was trying to think of that uh, uh, Kings. Now, Sanballat sent a note. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Sent to Nehemiah, let us join up with you. Let us work together in this. Let us. Nehemiah said, now here's what I'm talking about. When you stay prayed through, the discerning of spirits will operate in your life. And the minute you come in contact with somebody, you'll be able to know whether there's trouble or, or whether they're true to their word. Can you say amen? All you folks don't have no business being took by nobody. Because if you stay sharp in the spirit, you'll get a flag or ten of them sometimes <laughs> waving yeah. in the wind. Yeah. And you say amen. Yeah. My nana used to say bold things. And our granddaddy said, honey, don't be so harsh. Or don't say things like that. And you know me about 100% of the time it all play out just like she said. Amen. The fact is she was keener than most yeah. on people. They could be in her presence just a few minutes and she'd get back in the car and hear you thought you'd had a normal conversation. And all of a sudden, when you take off down the road, she'd either say, that's Scallywag or that Two-Face or whatever. And my granddaddy, he didn't talk about people and he'd say, honey, don't, you know, uh, don't be so strong or don't say that. Sure enough, it'd be that way every time. Can you say amen? Well, Nehemiah said, I'm sorry you tell him no. He ain't joining up with us. We, we're doing something totally different. And and, and listen now, Sanballat was the sweetest man in the world. To Nehemiah said, no, I'm not joining alliance with you. Then Sanballat came over there, laughed him and mocked him. That's what they're going to do. Now hear me preach tonight. If they can't get you by trying to, to deceive you, they're going to try to mock you. They're going to try to mock what you believe. Can you say amen? amen. Now listen, amen. criticism is criticism. Amen. Whether it's raging red-faced mad on that extreme, or whether it's folks' silliness. Amen. That's right. That's 
some folks hide ugliness behind jokes. And they'll tell you, just picking. No, they were using that road to get what they wanted to say said. And don't you think about anything different. It don't matter whether it's subtle or loud, it's still trying to oppose what God's trying to do. And so Sennacherib comes up and says, ha, 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 uh, uh, you know, listen to Hezekiah. He thinks God's going to deliver him. He's telling you people just hold on. The Lord's not true. He's telling you he's going to seek God in your behalf and God's going to move. Mocked and made fun of, railed against those uh, Sandbally did the same. You know what he said? He said, if a fox run up your wall, it tear it down. And what did the people do? They couldn't understand why Nehemiah wouldn't come down and deal with these things. Well, the same reason Hezekiah didn't go meet Rabshakeh. He sent three of his other men. He said, hallelujah. Sometimes the worst thing you can do is attend a meeting with somebody. Amen. If people called me and said, oh, you know, oh, we need to talk, and I know that they're getting ready to show out, you know, I'll just tell them quickly, I don't have time to listen to you. Pitch your fit. Amen. Amen. Now, some people want to talk about what the, they want you to help them pray for God to give direction. That's a whole nother ballgame. We're supposed to help one another that way. But when people are wanting to have a showdown with you, the best thing for you to do is don't go. Amen. That's right. That's the truth. Don't go. I don't care if they send out engraved invitations. <laughs> Am I helping anybody or not? Don't go. Hezekiah said, I ain't going. I'm going to send you bread. What was he going to do? He was going to stay on that throne. Yeah. Oh, my shot And rule and reign. And so the Bible said that, that he got up in the Hebrew tongue and told everybody, let a revolter try to. He said, if you'll join with us, we Assyrians have whipped every king we've ever sat out after. We have a record of zero losses. I want you to know your prayers are getting ready to change the record. You get ready to upset the cart. Your voice is going to become the deciding factor in some major decisions. That's thus saith the Lord, by the way. That ain't just preaching. That was prophecy. Hallelujah. Your voice is going to become the deciding factor in some major decisions. Thus saith the Lord. God is going to elevate your voice above the voices of all that are around you. And the Lord says that even the ears are going to become tender to the sound of your voice and you are going to have a major effect. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Now here's the thing. Hezekiah is the least man you want to shake. Because first of all, everybody knows he's got a major powerful prayer life. He prayed himself right out of death, even when the prophet Isaiah said, set your house in order because the day you shall surely die. He turns his face to the wall, prays till Isaiah can't even get out of the courtyard before he comes back and raises him up. Not to mention what we don't preach to you a lot. A lot of this stuff I just don't have time to get into. There's some wonderful things in the Word of God you need to know. And you need to know when Hezekiah took the throne, it was a mess, brother. It was a backslidden, cold mess. I mean, the priest had made all kind of deals. That's some of what stirred up now between Sennacherib. They've made all kind of deals with him. They've just made a, a, a almost a, a bank chamber out of the treasury of the house of God. They've let that man have anything he wants. He's ruled them. He's, he's made deals, cut deals. I'm fixing to get to that in a minute. You ain't here to cut a deal. You're out glory to God. You're not here to bargain a release. You're here to set down the rule and the authority of the kingdom of God in this earth. Hallelujah. You're not to bargain with disease. You're not to bargain with death. You're not to cut a deal with, 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 with uh, oh my God, with separation and trouble and affliction and conflict. You're here to establish a rule and a reign. 
Hallelujah. And so the Bible says that Hezekiah went in that temple so young, yet so anointed by God, he cleaned that whole temple out from top to bottom, got them priests prayed through, everybody was re-sanctified, on fire for God. He had prayed such a revival into that camp of Judah that the Bible said there were so many people showed up when he declared a Passover that there wasn't enough preachers to minister to the crowd that showed up. So he ain't even a priest now. He's a king. But he walks out over the people, stretches out his hands, and says, Oh my God, I ask thee to heal all, oh glory to God, all of these people. And the Lord heard him from heaven and hearkened unto the voice of Hezekiah and healed all that land. Glory to God. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked way, I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin and I will heal their land. So that's exactly what happened. And when everything got said and done, he had revival. Everywhere you looked, you couldn't find a heathen God in a house. You couldn't find an altar if they are nowhere. Only one altar in the whole land. And that was the heavenly altar. And everybody, he, and that's what Rab Shaker told all them people in their Hebrew tongue. He said, well, look at him. You don't even have an order except his order. Well, glory. said, you can't even pray unless you pray to his God. You can't even. And he said, come on over here with us. And the Bible said those three spokesmen rent their garments and returned back to Hezekiah. Only it wasn't in a spirit of faith they were a defeated foe. The Bible said they were in defeat. And they came back into Hezekiah. And Hezekiah said, let me show you what to do. He ripped his cloak. Only he didn't, he wasn't in defeat. He put on sackcloth. Yeah. And he put ashes on his head. Yeah. Ooh, you know what that meant? That meant I'm fixing to go in here. And when I come out, something's going to change. I'm going in here. Don't mess with me. That's what that said. I'm not ready to sit down and eat yet. I'm not ready to go to a party yet. I'm not ready to have a normal day yet. I refuse to be comforted. I refuse to be satisfied. I'm stirred up on the inside and I'm going after this thing and it's going to happen. Hallelujah to God. Oh my God. Hallelujah. I tell you, some of the hardest warfare has come against my mind preaching it. you preach this subject long enough and, and I know it's longer than most things I preach. And I, every time I get in the presence of the Lord, I hear the Spirit say, don't let it drive you out of your inheritance. Yeah. You stand the ground. Amen. Preach it. If they all don't Amen. like it, Amen. only Amen. ones ain't going to like it is them that won't do it. Yeah. Them that's doing it's on fire. Yeah. People that ain't doing it don't like it. Yeah. If these messages disturb you, it's because you ain't praying. Don't wiggle too much. You'll give yourself away in here tonight. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the Lord tells me, stay the course. Just before this time of my ministry, God called me out in a meeting and by the Holy Ghost instructed me that I was to let loose and hold nothing back. I was to go full steam ahead and that I was not to think it too hard. Praise the Lord. He set me up for what's going on right now. Yes. Amen. King Hezekiah said, I'm going to rip my clothes, but not because I'm sad. I mean business. I'm going to turn this thing around. Yes. And then the Bible said that he implored three senior priests in that house and said, go get the prophet. Yes. You know who the prophet was, don't you, Isaiah? Everybody say king, king. Priest, priest, and prophet. prophet. Anytime you invoke the anointing, of the king, the priest, and the prophet in your life. You're walking in that full measure. You're going to see and hear and know something. Come on, somebody. The king's anointed to talk. Hello. The prophet's anointed to see. The priest is anointed to hear. Come on now. 
And the Bible said when they got to Isaiah, they told Isaiah what Hezekiah said, and before they finished telling him, Isaiah started prophesying. He said, Thus saith the Lord, don't even pay no attention. Don't even let it mutter you. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Don't even be shook up. That's what he said. Don't even let it shake you. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Don't even let it shake you. Don't let it bother you. This is the message that, 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 I, that Hezekiah sent. He said, this is a day of rebuke and blasphemy because the children have come to their birth and there is not strength to bring forth. Now, that the message Bible clears it up a little better. He said, what Hezekiah said was, we're all pregnant over here. We just need a little more help to birth what we're feeling. We're in travail. We feel the birth pain. We know there's victory here, but we want you to join that prophetic voice with our intercession. Oh, and our God. I'm telling you right now, your intercession in the homes and the prophetic voice in this pulpit will cause a birthing of signs and wonders and miracles. Do you hear me, church? You being faithful to cry out to Him at home and then you coming in here and sitting under a prophetic pulpit will cause that which is in you to give birth. Hallelujah. It'll give birth every time. You'll have production. Something will come forth. When they delivered the message and then came back and delivered the prophecy. And this is what the Lord said. The Lord said He's made rumors of His own. Now I'm fixing to let Him hear one. Hello! And he did. The king of Ethiopia sent a word and said, we're coming to attack you. Yes. Poor Rabshakeh's got to leave because his own home's being attacked. But before he left, you know things don't always go easy. Especially when you get tight and grip hard. Hallelujah. There he is standing his ground. Snapper said, take, a, take Hezekiah this letter. And the letter basically said, don't you worry, you fix it and get yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you listening to me? He said, don't you worry. This ain't over. <clears throat> You're going to fall. You know what the Bible said Isaiah, Hezekiah done? He went back into the altar. And he spread that letter out in front of the altar. Some of you got some letters you need to spread out before the Lord. Oh my God. Some of you got some messages from your doctors and some things that you just need to spread out before the Lord. Amen. And the Bible said that even while he was interceding again, guess what happened? When he got to interceding, the prophet got prophesied. Can you say amen? Now I want to just briefly summarize all this in case you missed anything I said. What we're dealing with is a, and, and, and this is for those that think prayer just handles them little problems. Listen to this. It's a national crisis. All of Judah's fiction be done away with. The burden falls to the highest man in office. He faces losing his position, losing his throne, his nation, his office. He also faces a whole land turning against him in revolt. Come on. I mean, he faced it among his own people. I'm not being negative. I'm just trying to show you prayers the answer to the largest uh, yeah. of situations. I'll tell you, some of us has got too educated for our own good. Yeah. Little old silly, trite, trivial matters, we don't mind taking to the Lord. But something big comes up, we all want to get together and discuss it yeah, and figure out what we're going to do about it. I want to tell you, if a king over a nation... Yeah. Is going to intercede for it. And it should tell us tonight, my God, that big problems just means big prayer. Big problem just means big prayer. As long as Hezekiah prayed, the Lord kept the prophesying. Kept prophesying over and over again. He Now listen to this. God spoke this to me today. He won't contend with coldness and complacency. But he will move heaven and earth for one hungry, seeking heart who dares to step out. I'm telling you tonight that as long as you ask, you'll receive. As long as you seek, you'll find. As long as you knock, he'll open. 
As long as you're hungry and thirsty, He'll fill. Come on. He's not going to battle you for your coldness. Amen. But if you turn the least bit towards His way, He'll flood you. He'll flood you. The final word of prophecy in this again from the Message Bible was, this is so good. Don't worry, said Isaiah. He won't enter this city. He won't let loose a single arrow. He won't brandish so much as one shield, let alone build a siege wrap against it. He'll go back the same way he came. He won't set a foot in this city. God's decree. I've got my hand on this city to save it, and I'll save it for my very own sake and for David's sake. Hallelujah. Now that is how you turn the battle to the gate. If I, if I could say such a thing, this is much more stronger. Hallelujah. This is a much more stronger method of deliverance than waiting until all the stuff invades, takes over, and then having to chase it all down all over town and drive it out. Believe you've got power to stop it before it ever gets started. Everything you see supernaturally ain't meant to happen. Some of it you're seeing because God's anointed you to change it. Everybody say change the course. Sometimes you just got to change the course, folks. Oh my God. It's traveling in a way you don't want it to and you know it ain't the Lord's will. So what do you do? You get in the middle. Intercept it. If you wouldn't get very much pay on a football team if you didn't know that when that ball's going the way you don't want it to go, glory to God. Yeah. What do you do? Intercept it. Yeah. Hello, church. Yeah. I mean, it's worth if you can't even run it. Yeah. Just getting it long enough to fall on the ground with it. Yeah. Whoa! He shot out of my height. I'd rather aim high and miss it and shoot low and make it. I'll tell you now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd rather turn the ashes than the dust. Any day. I'd rather burn up with passion and zeal and desire. Come on. Than to just sit and corrupt away. Tell I wasn't nothing but a pile of dust that no man could use. Oh, praise the Lord. So, so, so you are going to have to stop this chasing stuff after it all, all hell breaks loose. You're anointed now to stop it from breaking loose. Come on. He interceded and God sent reinforcements. Now I want you to look at this carefully because I'm getting ready to close. First of all, when He interceded, God gave Him a company of priests. So some of your reinforcement is going to be godly, anointed people who will pray with you. Ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Whether you know it or not, you need the ministry Amen. in your life. Yes. Any man who preaches or to be preached to, yes. it is not safe that the only man preaching a man hears is his own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've met pastors all my ministry who would not attend their own Sunday school. Hallelujah. They is above that, submitting to anybody else's teaching. And furthermore, with all the available devices now, you can be preached to. Glory to God. 24 hours a day. Folks, I let it play when I'm sleeping at night. Are you hearing me? Oh my Lord, I let it play all night long. Amen. God, everybody say godly ministry is a reinforcement. You better hang on to that. You that you can't get through this by yourself. This is a body thing. And anytime you're in a body environment and, and there is somebody in that environment that refuses to worship or participate with that body, you can mark it. Hallelujah that they don't think they need nobody but what they've got. Well, it don't work that way. You need me whether you like it or not. And I need you. Hallelujah. Alright, secondly, the Lord sent the reinforcement of supernatural gifts. Prophecy. Listen to me. The more you pray, the keener you'll get in Holy Ghost gifts. Are you listening? 
discernment will get stronger. Faith will get stronger. Does not the Bible say building yourselves up on your what? Most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Does the Bible say covet earnestly and desire the best gifts? What's the best gift? The one you need it the most at the moment? Hello? The one that's needed it the moment? If I'm laying hands on a sick man, hallelujah, and believing for him to be healed, what gift do I need? I need the gift of faith, and I need the gift of healing to work through me. Hallelujah. But if I'm in the middle of a service and that service is tight and won't break and God can move on me, what's that, what, how's He going to move on me? He's either going to use me to give a message, interpret a message, or give a prophecy. I don't need the gifts of healing then. I need that. Now, how many gifts do you have? All nine of them. Because if you got the Holy Ghost, you got all nine gifts. But what did Paul tell Timothy you have to do with that gift? Stir it up. What does stir it up mean in the Greek? Stir it into flame. What does he long to make his ministers? Come on now. A flame of fire. What is a minister of who's a flame of fire? One who flows in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? So God has sent anointed ministry and supernatural gifts as reinforcements into your life. If I don't know, God will show me. Come on. Hallelujah. Even if I don't know anything about anything and He wants me to know it, He'll work by the Word of Knowledge. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Even if somebody's headed up my road to dupe me, to deceive me, to overtake me, to try to make me something I'm not, that gift of discerning of spirits can say, a uh, flag's waving, look out. Come on, somebody. Look out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then finally, this is, the, this is the highest point of the whole story. This is how it all ended. And one night, God sent one angel. And he slew 185,000 soldiers. By the time the sun rose, the field was full of dead corpses. That's what intercessory prayer while you may be out there flexing your knowledge and your will and your way, somebody's going to, there's a Hezekiah. He knows that the key to all things is having revival, praying in a move of God, having a fresh taste of the Holy Ghost. That's what's wrong with some of y'all around here. You need a fresh taste Amen. of the Holy Ghost. You've dried up. Yeah. Amen. Your shout's gone. You've talked yourself out of moving in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's the reason you stay ill all the time. That's the reason nobody can't get along with you. You don't flow in the Holy Ghost no more. Having it in your head and having it in your spirit is two different things. I don't care what you know with your head. It's what you taste and see that the Lord is good. Can you say amen? I've seen some of the sweetest Sold saints. Hallelujah. Get so stiff as an iron bar because they quit having that fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you now, we need to get back to the altar and get a fresh anointing from God and start flowing in that sweetness of the Lord because the fresher He is, the sweeter He is. Everybody needs to pray for the Lord to make you sweet and loving. <laughs> so, Amen. And then he, now listen, and I've got to close his time, well, his time right now to close. He, he prayed these reinforcements and the action stopped it before it ever got started. Amen. Now, this is what I'm, I'm getting to. Not flaying around all over the place, trying to run down the victory, trying to chase an enemy. No, no, that's not what I mean. I mean, violent, take it. By force. He, glory to God. You take the enforced power of the kingdom of God and dethrone that thing. This is what God meant when He said to Jeremiah, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, called thee, ordained thee. And they, Jeremiah said, I can't speak, I'm but a child. And here's what the Lord said Say not, I'm a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whosoever, whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. 
Be not afraid of their faces. Oh, I've held on to that scripture many a time. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Listen to it now. Then the Lord put forth his hand, touched my mouth, and said, Behold, I put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over nations and kingdoms. Listen to it now. To root out, pull down, destroy, throw down. And when you get through with all that, he said, then build and plant. You're not here to cut bargain, strike, strike deals. You're not here to develop. You're not here to adapt. Are you listening to me? You're here to destroy. You're here to drive out. You're here to move out. Everything that opposes this kingdom. Not with mean words and terrorist preaching that holds everybody under condemnation, but with full force intercessory prayer. It'll clear the land. And then you'll plant the kingdom. Ah, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. David called the, called the Lord the Lord of hosts. Amen. And that's because in David's hardest time when he was running from Saul and was in Ziklag, the Bible said from that day by day by day God sent men to David. Oh, great men, mighty men of valor. And they gathered until they were like the Lord's host. They were mighty men, helpers of war, armed with bows, could hurl stones with the left or the right hand. I'm talking about what God getting ready to send you folks to stand with you in this prayer ministry. Men of war who could handle the shield and the buckler. Men who had the face of lions and the speed of deers. Oh my God. Are you listening? And then he came down the line and talked about the children of Issachar. Oh, hallelujah. And the children of Issachar simply means the ministry of intercession. Because Issachar was the strong house who crouched between two burdens and in the midst of those burdens he saw rest was good. Come on now. What did he do? He bare his shoulders and he picked up the two burdens. Oh, somebody say amen. And he bore them away. Come on. Now here we get over here in David's mighty men and find out that he had a group with him called the sons of Issachar. They were the intercessors. And you know what the Bible said? They had understanding of the times. People that pray hear from God. Flat out. There's an don't know about that. Well, try quit arguing with it and just do it. Amen. I can preach, 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 to lay hands and stir up. But I can't go home every day and say, come on, honey, get in here and let's pray. You ought to be more mature than that. Amen. Hello. You say, well, I ain't going to do it just because you're telling us to. Yeah, and rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Amen. And stubbornness is idolatry. Amen. And that's why nothing you do is going to work. Because you're opposing yeah. what God is saying yeah. Yeah. in this hour. Yeah. You'll rebel, you spring, repent, yeah. and do your first works over again. Yeah. And fall into that first love. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ain't you tired of doing without? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you fool. That's what I that's what the proverb said. How long will you love simplicity? Yeah. Not me. I've lived enough years. In that dummy state, I'm ready to rule. Amen. I'm ready to reign. Amen. My God, Brother Hagin said, knowing these things and not walking them out is like living down in a shack at the end of the hill. My God, sweating and drinking branch water yeah. when you could be living in that big old house on top of the hill yeah. with all the lights on. Aren't you tired of looking at the other fellas blessing? Aren't you ready to tell the Lord, I will not let thee go except thou bless me? How many has heard the word of God tonight? How many believing right now God's loosening reinforcements? My God, heaven's setting a plan, plotting out my deliverance and my escape. Hey, Shemahiah, there have no temptation taken you but such as is common unto man. But God who is faithful will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with every temptation do what? Make a way of escape. Hallelujah. 
that you may be able to bear it. Yes, oh you. Lord, if you feel closed in, take a deep breath in the Holy Ghost tonight and look again. God is making a way of escape for you. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.